Welcome back to It's Queer Magic. It's me, your host, Kirbo, and today we're doing some divination. <laughs> happy eclipse. Feels weird to say happy because it's like not always happy, but here we are eclipsing no matter what, right? So I've got a reading for you. Simple, quick to the point, and we are doing this by element. So up first are the earth signs. So if you are an earth, if you are an earth sign sun or rising rising will be more accurate i really i do these for the rising signs but your sun sign will give you some accurate information as well this is useful for you you can look at them all if you want you can watch all three sun moon and rising you can just literally watch whatever one you're called to and do what you want to do with it but these are intended for your rising sign so up first earth signs for my earth risings and earth suns i have the star and this is the afro tarot by jesse jimanji and the star the star is ruled by aquarius and it is a healing card but we want to remember that it is about information as well we're absolutely healing and your focus is on healing but that might not mean what you think it means right off the bat if you have been in like say you've got knee pain and you get the star it might not be about your knee just healing right it could more power to you i hope it does but the meat of this, the root, the medicine of the star is kind of about a download, especially in this moment. It feels to me like there is now a piece of information that you did not have that you will be receiving during the eclipse or during eclipse season or that you have now that you did not have before about how to actually go about healing the deep seated wounds that you have. Not just how to go about it, but also like what it really is. You know, I get the feeling that there are, obviously, you don't have to be a psychic to know that there are layers to every wound and to all our traumas. But I get the feeling that you've been working on this wound layer by layer by layer. And there's another layer underneath it that really has been a big point of pain, a big pain point in this that has been disguised, that you've not been able to see. And this eclipse just wants to show you, look, it's actually this. Like you thought you had a like blood infection, but you really just have a splinter and take care of it, right? Or you thought you were suffering because your inner child didn't have enough space, but it turns out your inner child was actually just so afraid, right? There are a million different explanations for a million different people. But this is really about an upgrade. If we want to use like tech language like that, which I think is great and appropriate for an Aquarius ruled card, this is like the software update. It's new information about how to run. It's different connections inside of you saying, actually, we're going to do it this way. Here's the new code for being creative, for being confident, for being uh, self-assured or whatever, right? This is the new pathway. And building new pathways is complicated and is difficult sometimes there are emotional roadblocks I I, I I was gonna hesitate to say every time but like really every time there are emotional roadblocks there are things that need to be looked at and this information is going to help you this is a time of deep connection to yourself to your higher self to the planet and aligning all of those different versions of yourself to be on the same page about how to move forward. So if you've been frustrated, if you've been feeling like, who is this person and they're not who I wanna be, there's something else there, or you're like so tired of your trauma response, right? You're so tired of feeling this distrustful or this whatever, right? This is a perfect moment for you. Pay attention to where you are getting really frustrated. Pay attention to where you are seeming like you're spiritually or emotionally stubbing your toe on things and look at that clear that path don't just walk by it and say i'm going to remember to not kick it next time adjust it right the star again this is an air sign i know aquarius has aqua in the name and it is the water bearer but it's not the water it's the water bearer it's about information being dispersed where it needs to be and it is about the information that is good for all of us for all of us to expand and all of us to grow and all of us to evolve as like a whole human race but 
in the personal, in the, the micro inside of you. This is about clearing away some old stuff. It's about going down that path where the old stuff was living and making sure that it is strong enough that it's going in the right direction so that this energy that is going to be moving through you is going to the appropriate place. I don't want to get lost in metaphor, but I do mean to say that there are like pathways in our brain and in our emotions and in our spirit, right, that get clogged. And sometimes after clearing that clog, we need to close down that pathway and redirect this energy somewhere else, right? Because it's not safe. It's not or it doesn't go where it needs to go, or it's like leaking, it's got excess just running off, right? Or we need to make sure that it stays clear and that the blockages that we're falling in to clog it up, we are taking care of those boundaries and those borders and making sure that we feel that they are secure or that we are making an attempt to make them secure. Ultimately, Earth Signs, this is a beautiful time and the information might, might not feel good to receive. In fact, it does not feel to me like it's going to feel good to receive. And it might make you feel really sad. It might pull up grief over something that you thought you've already grieved over. You know, it might pull up grief around something that you missed out on as a child. You know, it's kind of like that thing going around about re-grief where you're sad about something, you have grief about a certain experience as a child, and as you get older, you have a different perspective, so you kind of grieve it again with a different perspective. It's got that. It might have you looking back at things that shouldn't have been the way that they were. And what the star is here to do is to offer you a soothing balm, a clean water, right? It's washing through it with something that is rooted in the truth. It wants you to see the truth so that you can function in this world not living against your grain, living in a way that feels right for you, that feels moral, that feels supported, that feels like you are not hiding. This eclipse wants to help you not hide, but kind of not by pulling the curtain back from you to the world, but sort of pulling the curtain back from you to your inner world. And the star is really going to deliver something that is the most important, most valuable piece of information you've got about your healing to this date. Okay? So I hope that's helpful. Thank you so much, Earth Signs. Take care and ah, keep breathing. Okay, so for my air signs, we have the moon. And the moon is a complicated card for some. The moon is a stressful experience for some. The moon is a massive healer and a a change maker. But the thing about the moon is that it moves in the dark, right? The the moon is brightest in the dark, of course. But it makes its moves. It takes its action. It does its healing. It works with mystery in the dark and so many of us with the trauma of unexpected things the trauma of realizing that there are monsters in the dark sometimes that there are um that the unknown can cause not cause but contain dangers that you may have run into too soon you know that you may have run into without the tools to understand that it was not necessarily the unknown that made you suffer or that put you in pain but when the moon comes up to us if we've got those experiences we really fight back against it because we don't like to not be in control I don't like the unknown I don't want to do something that I can't see where it's going (laughs) but unfortunately we are just not in control of those things and fortunately or unfortunately depending on who you are we need mystery to be well humans need mystery we need darkness we need absence of exposure in order to be well it's one of our needs right and the moon card really is asking you air signs to find a way to root down into trust deep lucid trust 
even and especially when you can't exactly see where the path ahead of you is leading you anymore. Maybe you've already begun this path. Maybe it is right in front of you and you're being asked to take the first steps. But either way, you likely can't see where it goes or it likely, if you can see it, looks like something that you don't want to do. <laughs> looks like a path that's like totally scary. It's twisty. There might be like stairs or like a water crossing or like a mountain and it's just looking scary and you don't want to do it. I respect and understand you and I'm right there with you. But when the moon card is on the table, we know that we can trust in whatever it is that is pulling us to do this thing, to engage in this darkness. The moon really has this wild energy. It has a call. It has a control, a sort of um, seductive, luring energy to the wildest parts of us, the, the human animal part of us, the part of us that is just flesh and blood and desire, right? The moon sends out its tendrils of energy and sucks us into a direction. It says, come this way. This is so seductive. You want this. This is the direction. But we look at that and, and we feel in our bodies like, yes, I want that. I am being called to that. I know it's pulling me. But visually, we're looking at it like, ah, no that's dangerous. I don't want that. That's so scary. But the truth is, is that the moon, it's calling you to something that is, <sighs> when the moon is calling to us, it's not just calling out to us independently. It's calling back. It's responding. It's responding to a call that is already beaming out of our chest and out of our gut and out of our head that we are saying, I want this. And you might not even know consciously that you want it, but you're calling out to it. There's a, there's a sense of fate. There's a sense of desire and fate twined in, braided with each other that the moon responds to by saying, okay, it's this way. The thing that you want wants you and it's over here. But the moon's power is strong in the dark. So you have to trust that the path forward may not be the one that makes sense to you. It may not be the one that looks like it takes you where you want to go. But if you cannot deny that you keep being pulled towards this direction, it is time to trust it. It's time to do your best to trust in the mystery of your life, to trust in the part of you that's calling out for something independently of your brain. <laughs> your body's like, I want this. And your brain's like, no, ew, I hate that. But your body's like, no, this is the thing. Not all, it's not a universal truth that it's always better to listen to the body. But when the moon is on the table, when these eclipses are happening, and there's something that's strong, that feels unavoidable, that feels like it's rooted in the truth and not rooted in self-sabotage. It feels deeper right? And it's not self-destructive, right? The moon is not going to call you to a path that has you ending, it, withering away, uh, putting yourself in mortal peril for no purpose, um, needlessly reckless, right? It's not actually going to have you walk down a path that leads to your destruction. That does not mean that every path is safe. This is the world. Chaos rules here. Anything can happen. And we agree to that. And we are walking along this path in control of our own bodies thinking, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I, I, all of this to say that if you are being called into old habits or addictions, that is not the path that you're being called to walk on, right? It is the, an addiction is not your path and it doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you evil. It doesn't make you low vibrational. It, but it isn't the path to your well-being, right? So when the moon is full, when energies are wild, when the moon is new and energies are wild, and it can really wrestle up some of that old stuff. And I don't want anyone who is dealing with addiction or dealing with any other self-sabotaging habits that are hurting you to think that I'm telling you to listen to that call because that call is strong. It is strong. And I respect that and understand that and don't want you to think that I'm saying that you should follow that. But if you can tune in a little deeper and see what else is there, if you're being called, if that part of you is being activated, there might be something else that is actually even scarier to look at and deal with that that old habit kind of wants to pretend is it is the solution, right? And I'm not like 
<laughs> I'm not like an addiction counselor. I'm not trained in this. This is not something that I think uh, is my place to speak on. But I just really didn't want you to think that I meant that the full moon or the new moon making you wild, pulling you somewhere is pulling you towards something that's going to be destructive for you. And I urge you to take another look, to take another second, to take a breath and realize that that might not be the unknown. I'm talking about the unknown. Uh, the path that you've been on is not the unknown path. And that's what I'll say. But for my air signs, this moon card is also a healer. A lot, all the cards in the tarot can heal us. The moon asks us to tune into something deeper inside of us. Our intuition, yeah. But a part of us, of the part of our intuition that knows things because it's been here. It doesn't just, it's not just psychic energy, it's remembering. The moon wants you to remember your wildness and let yourself trust the wild path forward. Especially when it activates your fear and especially when you can't see five feet in front of you. And oftentimes, I feel like a lot of you are already on this path and you started on it when it was clear and it's about to get dark. And that's okay. You are not wrong. You're not on the wrong path. It is just the portion of the path that is ruled by night. And eventually the sun will come out and you will be on the part of the path that is completely visible. And that will come with its own challenges and everything in good time. But for now, lean in, listen deep to the things that you are calling out to that are calling out back to you. Listen to the part of yourself that wants to be wild, that remembers being completely wild, that doesn't fit into boxes, that doesn't have the texture it's supposed to have, that isn't necessarily sterile and chaste, that is kind of... <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. That's kind of like juicy and wet and, and almost gross, maybe mucusy, right? Because that's life. That's real life. And where there is moisture, there is transformation. And that's what I'll say. Thank you, air signs. Now, for my fire signs, my fire risings and fire sun, we have the three of swords. The three of swords. This is not a card to fear you know the three of swords is not necessarily the moment where the swords get stabbed into your heart we see in this image a heart depicted with three swords already in it so you likely aren't about to be backstabbed you're likely not about to be hurt this is an opportunity to see the ways that you have already been hurt the pain in your heart to see it for what it is to expand your understanding of these wounds, of this pain, and to finally find a way to kind of grasp these swords and pull them out of your heart. This is very much healing, similar to um, the star, similar to the star, but in a different texture. This is not a major arcana, it is a minor arcana, and oh, The Three of Swords wants you to find a way, or is going to help you to find a way to trust in the people that are trying to help you, to trust in the organizations, um, circumstances, people, places, things, right, that are trying to address these wounds. Maybe not actively trying to address the wounds, but more like what the way in the ways that they're trying to love you is activating some of the wounds. It's making those swords itch around the scar tissue that's grown over them. Remember, when we are healing wounds like this, when there are swords in our heart and they need to be pulled out, they will bleed upon removal. The places that your heart has tried to heal over it are going to be cut off. They're going to be sliced and you're going to bleed. That doesn't mean, again, that it's just going to be like a wild experience of pain and you're just going to crying on the floor forever. It might be, it might be a little emotionally heavy. You might need support. You might need other people. From my perspective, all of the threes have us engaging with life 
in a way where there are other people there, right? In, li- in the way that life just is. It's not an isolated experience. Sure, the tarot is not usually talking about other people. It's talking about us. But in the threes, I really have the perspective that the threes are talking about us and other people in relation to other people and how those relationships affect us. And in the three of swords, it is about how our groups of friends and our families and classmates and our groups of people can hurt us, but also how it usually requires some form of community in order to heal those wounds. So for my water signs with the three of swords, just remember that not every relationship that you are Engaging in now is going to be a repeated pattern of old relationships, especially if you yourself are trying to be more present, are trying to be less reactionary and make specific choices that are different from the choices that you've made in the past. The three of swords is usually here when there are possibly new tools, um, new understandings in your brain, like new thought processes and brain chemistry and perspectives that have you looking at the issue from different angles than before. But also it says you've been trying this tool and really this tool might work better. And so it is about information. It is an air card. This is the swords talking about our mind or talking about our brain. And the three really says, we know you've been hurt and I know that you're afraid to heal it because it's going to hurt too. But we are moving on from this pain. We are not moving on in the same cycle to experience the same wound over and over again. Here is your opportunity to look at this, to address it, to talk to it, to retrain your brain, to think and expect something else, to expect that relationships will be work out as opposed to expecting them to fail before you even get to know each other, right? And I'm not just talking about romantic relationships. Quite frankly, I'm actually not talking about romantic relationships at all. I am talking about friendships. I'm talking about communities. This three of swords is asking us to address, asking us water signs, us fire signs, fire signs to address the ways in which the old community wounds are hindering our ability to build new relationships in new communities that are healthy, that are balanced and supportive in this life. This is a beautiful blessing. It might not feel great right away to be like, wow, ow, actually that friend breakup in high school has made it so that I have been unwilling to make a new friend. And I've been thinking it was everybody else's fault, but it turns out it was me. This is the time to just not judge yourself, to see it for what it is and to make a kind of make a plan about what you're going to do with it. Now that you know this, now that you can see the swords in your back, what are you, how are you going to move forward? The three of swords wants you to know that anytime you've been wounded, every wound can change. You might not be able to heal every wound in this lifetime, but it will change. It won't bleed forever. There will be a way to move through the world with this wound informing you, but not in a way that it holds you back or stops you from being the ultimate, loving, brave, social creature that you are meant to be. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you so much, Fire Signs. Okay. 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 For our water signs, our water rising and our water suns, I have the sun the moon and the sun huh interesting a sun card for my water signs listen everything that you've been working on on the inside will make its way to the physical world whether you have been manifesting things and working on trying to be the kind of person that could receive that that can hold it that could do something with it while you have been like get you've already got the information about what wound needs healing and you are making an attempt to see it you're making an attempt to like deal with your inner child or whatever it is that you're working on on the inside the sun says it's time to look at this in your physical world it's time to see it outside of yourself so you might find yourself having uh feelings experiencing circumstances opportunities options people place things that give you the chance to 
physically, visibly see and experience your growth. If you have been trying to be more of yourself and be brave and kind of post yourself online or or share your art with people, you know, and you've been working on that on the inside, trying to build yourself up, it is now time to do that in the physical world and see what it's like now to see how it feels to just kind of do that. The sun requires vulnerability. So when you are being pushed up against your like growth edge about how much of your emotions, how much of your truth you're letting, you're willing to let the world and your community see, if you've been up against that wall, you might feel that wall move further. That doesn't mean it's just going to be easy to let yourself be more and more exposed. It does. It's like you've been pushed up against the wall, the wall moves, and now you've got to force yourself to keep going. It might be difficult. It might not be super fun, but it's worth it. It's so worth it because the sun wants to illuminate the dark crevices of you to give you energy in the places that it hasn't been able to reach, to breathe new life into it, right? And the sun, the sun, the sun, the sun card, you know, sometimes people die of exposure, right? Exposure is excruciating. You're not going to die of exposure because it's not that kind of exposure, but it is an excruciating experience. So do not shy away from being exposed, being vulnerable, just because it's uncomfortable, right? I really encourage you to try to find a way to relearn that uncomfortability as comfortable as maybe this is home base. Maybe this isn't my extreme. Maybe I can start here next time. Maybe not, but maybe I'll try. I really feel like for huh, for this time with the sun on the table for you, it just feels like it's time to walk the talk. It's time to put your money where your mouth is. It's time to show up and be the person that you have been reserving for, excuse me, reserving for your own personal experience, reserving for your pseudonym online, reserving for your journal and your diary, reserving for just your personal experience. It's time to let other people in. In order for you to feel successful, be successful, in order for you to get where you're trying to go, you are going to have to let people see more of you. You're going to have to open up your chest and let people see the soft parts to say, I know this is scary. This is vulnerable. I am vulnerable. But the only way for it to get better is to do it. And the sun wants to deliver you the energy to do it. The sun wants to deliver you the energy to ah, let the sun that lives inside of you, your own personal mini sun, shine brighter and brighter and brighter. The sun card on the table in this moment for the water signs, it might be frustrating because when fire and water meet, there is steam. When the sun meets water, there is steam and evaporation. So you might feel frustrated. You might have excess energy. And I encourage you to find an outlet for that energy. You know, if you need a new sport, if you need to have different sex, if you need to exercise, if you need to uh, like plant things, if you just need to, you need to do something with this energy, please do something with it because it's not meant to slow you down. It's not meant to stop you. It's just what happens when these elements are in the same space. And the sun is life. And there's no point in trying to hide from it. You can't hide from it. Its rays penetrate through brick walls. And the best way to engage with the sun when the sun is on the table is to let yourself see yourself and to let others see yourself as well. And you might find out that your opinion of yourself is probably a lot different from everyone else's opinion of yourself. That your opinion and perspective of yourself is likely distorted by your inability to be outside of yourself. And finally, you might just see how beautiful, how valuable, how smart and incredible you are. And that might be challenge your belief system about how smart, beautiful and incredible you are. But that belief is ready to be challenged. So I hope that's helpful. Thanks so much for sticking around. Earth, air, fire and water. Love you all. Happy eclipse. Again, weird to say happy eclipse because uh, it's not always happy, but happy eclipse. Love you. Take care of yourself. And I'll see you in the next one. Okay. Take care.